Hey, welcome to another lesson for Make Science Easy. Today we're going to be learning about life processes. If you haven't watched the video about cells, you might find it useful to watch that first. On the screen we have got four pictures. We've got mushrooms, bacteria, a virus and a cat. One of these four things, believe it or not, is not actually living. By the end of this lesson, you should know which one it is. You should be able to explain why it is. You should know all of the life processes and what they do. It's really important to recognize that all living things do the following seven life processes. Movement, respiration, sensitivity, growth, reproduction, excretion, and nutrition. Any group of organisms that cannot do all seven things are not classified as living things. This might be quite surprising. Some things you might consider to be living aren't. There's a really easy way of remembering all seven life processes. We can use the monomic Mrs. Gren. Movement, respiration, sensitivity, growth, reproduction, excretion and nutrition. Movement. It's pretty obvious. All animals move. Just look at this video of a cheetah. We can see it's running. But do plants move? They don't have legs. They don't have limbs. Can they move? Well, if we look at the video here, yes, we can see they do. They move to follow the sun. They will track it. They will move towards their source of nutrients. They don't get up and move from place to place, but they move around in a fixed position. This is still movement. Perhaps it's slightly surprising that plants move, but they do. Respiration. All living things have a chemical reaction called respiration. Respiration is an organism's way of getting the energy we need from our food. That food normally comes in the way of glucose. It always happens in our friend, the mitochondria. You met him last lesson. If you're not sure, go back and watch it. The chemical reaction respiration always follows this pattern. Glucose plus oxygen makes carbon dioxide and water, and most importantly, energy. Respiration releases energy. That energy allows all of the processes in your life to happen. Some of that energy is transferred into heat. It keeps you warm. Just think about this. When you run about, when you do exercise, you feel hot. Why do you feel hot? Because respiration is happening. Respiration happens in every cell, in every living thing. There are one or two exceptions, such as red blood cells in your body, but respiration is happening in every cell in your body all the time, providing you with energy to keep you alive. Also, really, really important, do not confuse respiration with breathing. Respiration is not the same as breathing. You don't need to breathe to stay alive. Well, you do as a human, but not all organisms breathe. Respiration and breathing are not the same, and it's a very common mistake that people make. Sensitivity, one of the most important processes, it allows us to detect the world around us. We've got many sense organs, these sense organs detect the stimuli and we respond to them. In animals, our main stimuli are hearing, taste, touch, sight and smell. Plants have other stimuli. As you'll learn about in later lessons, plants will respond to gravity, to water, to sunlight. Some animals have other senses and can respond to things such as magnetism, but this is a very rare sense. So don't think that all senses in all animals are the same as the ones that you have. Growth. When you were born, you were much smaller than you are now. As you get older, you get larger and larger until you reach your full size. Does growing stop then? No. Parts of your body still grow. Your nose never really stops growing. Your ears never really stop growing. Your cells still grow and divide. As an organism, you might not get bigger, but even when you're fully grown, the individual cells in your body will still grow. Growth never stops. Reproduction is a life process that allows new life. It is absolutely essential. Without reproduction, 
we wouldn't have future generations and the species would die out. There are two main types of reproduction. There's sexual reproduction, which is what we have in humans and most animals. This is where we have two parents, a male and a female. It is possible to have asexual reproduction. Some plants use asexual reproduction. This is when there is only one parent and the plant makes an identical copy of itself. Some animals like aphids are capable of reproducing asexually. Any animal or plant that reproduces asexually will also be able to reproduce sexually. But being able to reproduce sexually doesn't mean you can reproduce asexually. This is really important. Viruses cannot reproduce on their own. A virus has to invade your cell and your cell works almost like a photocopier and it copies the viruses for it. Without your cells, a virus could not reproduce. It could not make future generations. So is a virus really living? It cannot do one of the seven life processes. If viruses cannot complete all seven life processes, we don't consider them to be alive. Excretion is the body's way of getting rid of harmful chemicals. Again, this is really, really important. Only chemicals that have been produced in your body, that have been made in your body, are excreted. So when you urinate, you're urinating urea. Urea is a chemical made in your body. It's made by chemical processes in your body. Urination is excretion. When you breathe out, you are excreting carbon dioxide. That carbon dioxide has been made in your body. Your body needs to get rid of it. Excretion gets rid of harmful products. If urine or carbon dioxide stayed in your body too long, it would cause you harm. In fact, it could kill you. If you don't excrete them, if you don't get rid of them, they will cause you harm. One thing that people often call excretion but is not is when you go to the toilet and you remove feces from your body. Feces has not been made in a chemical reaction in your body. It has not been made by your body's metabolism. Feces is the leftovers of your undigested food. These are not new chemicals being made in your body. These are chemicals that you ate that your body has not used. So we do not call it excretion, we call it egestion. Egestion is not one of the seven life processes. Make sure you know the difference between excretion and egestion. Our final life process is nutrition. Nutrition is your body's way of getting important chemicals into your body. Those chemicals are required to survive. The chemicals that your body takes in a nutrition are used for the other life processes. Without these chemicals from nutrition, we couldn't have respiration and we would not be alive. Animals get their nutrition by eating other living things. We eat other animals, we eat plants, we eat fungus, we get our nutrition through eating things. Plants use a very different method. Plants use something called photosynthesis. Photosynthesis, and we will learn about this in a later lesson, turns light from the sun and carbon dioxide and water into glucose and oxygen. And that glucose and oxygen can be used in respiration for energy. In summary, all living things undertake seven life processes. We can remember the life processes with the monomic Mrs. Gren. Movement, respiration, sensitivity, growth, reproduction, excretion, nutrition. All of the life processes are essential for life. If something does not do all seven life processes, then we don't consider it to be alive. Viruses are not living as they're not capable of reproduction without the help of other living things. I hope that I've made science easy for you. I hope that you've understood all the key ideas. Don't forget to use the resources to help your learning. If there's anything that you didn't understand or any questions you want to ask about this video, then make sure you write in the comments. I'll try and answer them as soon as I can. Don't forget to watch the next video on specialized cells. Until next time, keep learning.